An explosion at the U.S.-Canadian border, driving up tensions ahead of Thanksgiving. The blast prompting Homeland Security concerns and leaving nearby witnesses in disbelief. 30 feet from me, I seen something airborne. I first thought it was an airplane. It looked like slow motion. And I said, my God, it's a car. From KTVU Fox 2 News, this is The Four. And we begin this afternoon with new surveillance video showing the moment that a white sedan careened down a road and went airborne before exploding there at the U.S.-Canadian border in New York. Welcome everyone to The Four. I'm Heather Holmes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Frank Malicote. Reassurance just hours ago from the FBI that terrorism is not suspected in that fiery explosion. But you can see the towering fireball caused by the crash on this cell phone video. A witness says he saw the vehicle speeding from the town of Niagara Falls toward the Rainbow Bridge crossing between the U.S. and Canada over the Niagara River. Now, it swerved to avoid another vehicle, crashed into a fence, then flew into the air, hit a concrete barrier, and caught fire on the U.S. side of the bridge. Authorities confirmed this afternoon that two people inside the car were killed and a Customs and Border officer was injured. New York's governor said that so far, this appears to be an isolated incident. It's so important for me to stand here and tell the world based on what we know at this moment, and again, anything can change, there is no sign of terrorist activity with respect to this crash. We've identified that this is a local individual, a Western New Yorker. Two individuals died in the, the vehicle. The Border Patrol agent was treated for minor injuries and released from the hospital. Officials shut down three other border crossings in the area for a time today, but they were reopened this evening to accommodate heavy holiday traffic. Hear more now with us on the incident there uh, in Niagara Falls as Hal Kempfer, retired Marine Corps intelligence officer and CEO of Global Risk Intelligence and Planning. Hal, always nice to see you. Thanks for taking the time. So no sign of terrorism here, but obviously the site of this crash, of course, had a border bridge and the timing just ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday, it really raised a lot of concerns. Heather, there's concerns with all the borders, obviously, and, and particularly now, uh, we've had the Department of Homeland Security, the, the FBI, the National Counterterrorism Center have all put out heightened states of alert, heightened concern, all because of things stemming from October 7th, the war in Israel. And it's not just uh, international terrorists, it's not just uh, Hamas or Al Qaeda, which has also said they want to do attacks. Also concerns about far-right, neo-Nazi, anti-Semitic groups trying to do something. And here's something like this happens. And so everybody went to an immediate lockdown, if you will, uh, shutting down uh, some of the bridges. Uh, international flights going in and out of Buffalo were suspended. Uh, it was very prudent what they did until they figured it out. But, of course, now they've figured out that it really has no hallmarks or connection to terrorism mm -hmm. that they can think of. Yeah. And how, uh, let's talk about that. How, how did they do that so quickly? How did they rule out terrorism uh, in a matter of hours? Well, Frank, I think they looked at the car first. It was a, it was a Bentley SUV. That's a car that's over $300,000. A little unusual for a vehicle-borne improvised explosive device, I might add. Uh, and then they tracked it down to who was the owner. Uh, it was a, uh, 50, I understand it's a 56-year-old male that he and his wife were in the car, that, uh, that they had been at a casino nearby. And they were planning to go to a concert, a KISS concert in Toronto that got canceled. Uh, and they were simply up in that area. Don't know why the car went to a high rate of speed. That's still being worked out. We'll probably find out. But it had no connection to terrorism, no connection to any national terrorist groups. Uh, he, they come from a very upscale neighborhood uh, in New York. And, and frankly, it looked like an accident. Don't mm -hmm. know what caused the accident. But there was nothing that connected to terrorism. Yeah, and while this investigation was going on, how obviously uh, in response, the governor of New York calling for increased monitoring of all of the points of entry to the state. I mean, it was really understandable why everyone was taking these precautions, as you mentioned, especially given uh, what's going on right now. Well, everyone's being prudent. And I, and I have to say, looking at this on the front end, what they did, shutting down the international flights, uh, shutting down entry to the state. Uh, all of that was prudent until you ruled out that this is terrorism. There's just so much going on uh, these days. One of the things that they were also dealing with was uh, there was conspiracy stuff all over the Internet uh, on Twitter that this this car was one of two cars and they were heading to New York City for the Macy's Day Parade. 
And this was part of a big bombing. And of course, NYPD was at a heightened state of alert because of everything there. And this was just conspiracy stuff. The car was actually heading towards Canada, it wasn't actually heading into the United States. So uh, what this did was it caused a real info verbal, if you will, in the system. And they kind of had to get information out there very quickly to, to basically dispel some of this uh, conspiracy stuff that was hanging out on the Internet. Well, you mentioned the, the Macy's Day Parade. 3.5 million, yeah. I guess, lined the streets mm -hmm. of New York. A uh, lot of high-profile events, uh, not only tomorrow, but all weekend long with football games and whatnot. Is this just uh, a reminder as well to uh, be vigilant, both civilians and law enforcement? Frank, it's a reminder of see something, say something. If you see something suspicious, get it into the system. Look, there's a lot going on right now. Yeah. Uh, October 7th has changed the world. Uh, the threat spectrum has changed here dramatically in the United States. Uh, there's all sorts of uh, chatter, if you will, all sorts of things that they're picking up on. And whereas no hard and firm conspiracies have been stopped, there's been enough out there that everybody's leaning forward. So certainly with, uh, I know NYPD and the FBI very much on a heightened state alert in New York, but also anywhere there's a football game, a public gathering, everyone should be concerned. And of course, any place that's you know that, that's identifiable with uh, with uh, uh, Judaism uh, because of the threats to anti-Semitic threats, um, and then also uh, Muslim because of some of the anti-Islamic uh, rhetoric and demonstrations going mm -hmm. on. Both of these areas should be on a heightened state of alert. Before we let you go, Hal, just one follow-up question here. Can you talk a little bit about the relationship when it comes to the U.S. and Canada and how quickly they were able to work together on this type of an investigation? Oh, we have a very close relationship with Canada, yes. Uh, I, as you know, I'm a retired intelligence officer, and um, we have a special relationship with Canada and a few other countries. And uh, we have a very good collaborative relationship on the law enforcement side. Uh, RCMP and the FBI work together on joint cases all the time. So, uh, and, and if you go along the border, uh, you'll find that there's these regional groupings. They don't get a lot of attention, but there's these regional groupings where they work border issues, uh, specifically uh, across the border. So, yes, there's, you know, Canada is a separate country, U.S. is a separate country. But when it comes to border, we work uh, very closely, mm -hmm. sharing information. There's no barriers as far as that's concerned. Yeah, and really, uh, obviously, very important, that coordination, especially when something like this happens. I really appreciate you taking the time today and, and enjoy your Thanksgiving tomorrow. Heather, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Frank. Thank you, Hal. Right back at you. Thank you for that.